Alright. Welcome to PTI. Pardon the interrupt. Alright. Welcome to PTI. Pardon the interruption. I'm Adam Shmeem, the moderator, along with my good buddies, Freddie Stiefel and Sam Crash. So, we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna talk about at least two subjects today, uh, le at least two topics today. The first topic is, um, with the addition of Jimmy Butler, do you think that the Timberwolves, along with Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns, do you think that they have a good chance of beating the Warriors uh, next season? Absolutely not. The Minnesota Timberwolves are a very young team. Most of their, play their two best players, besides Butler, Wiggins, and Towns, aren't even fully developed. They didn't even make the playoffs last season, and now you're telling me that they can beat this, the greatest super team all time, that is the Golden State Warriors? I don't think so. What do you think, Freddie? Uh, I don't think they can beat them, but I think they can very well compete with them. Jimmy Butler just dragged the terrible Chicago Bulls team to the playoffs last season, and I think he can do the same for this young Timberwolves team, but he won't have to drag them because Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins are both 20-plus point scorers and can very well contribute to the Timberwolves playoff hopes. The only way that Jimmy Butler can get that Timberwolves team to compete is, is if he was averaging 50 points a game which he's not, so there's no way that he's gonna, they're even gonna get. If they had a series, Golden State wins 4-0 every single time. I feel like that there's no one on the Warriors team that can really defend Carl Anthony Towns. He is too tall for um, Draymond Green to defend him and he could just easily go over him every possession and potentially score 30 points every game. I just can't see that um, the, Timber um, the Timberwolves ever getting even close to the Warriors level. All right, so very very compelling arguments by both of you guys. The next thing I'm going to talk about is with the addition of Gordon Hayward, um, with the addition of Gordon Hayward to the Boston Celtics, do you think that the Boston Celtics um, have a good opportunity to beat the Cavs um, in in a future Eastern Conference Finals? We'll start with you, Sam. What do you think? Definitely. The the Celtics were able to get the first seed in the regular season last year, and they were able to compete with the Cavs. Now they added an all-star in Gordon Hayward, and they have a, a, a sensational rookie in Jason Tatum, and a new and a new developing Jalen Brown. Now their starting five is set. They have Isaiah Thomas, they have Gordon Hayward, they have Jay Crowder, Al Horford, and then they have Jalen Brown and Tatum coming off the bench. I think they're definite competitors. I feel like it's very funny how you get called, called almost getting swept competing. The Cavs dismantled the Celtics for the first three games of the series, and there was a little hiccup in the fourth game, but that was easily fixed in the fifth. This year, the addition of Gordon Hayward may, maybe will push it to six or seven, but there's no way the Celtics can beat the Cavs. Um. But in the regular season, they had the better record, and now they add an all-star and a bunch of young players that are develop, and even one that is developing. I think they have a real shot of coming out of the East this season. The only reason the Celtics got the first seed in last year's regular season is because Kevin Love was injured during a portion of the regular season. Also, LeBron James has said it himself that he has coasted during the regular season to try and perform better in the playoffs. I don't think Kevin Love... Um, when the third scoring option is going to make a huge difference in the regular season, especially considering the major improvements the Celtics have made over the offseason. All right, we got a bonus question here, um, and this will be the final. This will be the final question of the day. Um, so, a lot of NBA fans, um, they some support the idea of bandwagonism, which basically means that you root for the best team. Uh, do you agree with the fact that if the Warriors and the Cavs are the two best teams that you should just leave your team and uh, root for um, root for one of them. No way, not even a chance. If you're a the the whole point of being a fan is being there for your team in the good times and the bad. If you, if you switch the words of the Cavs, then you're you are not a true fan. I completely agree with you on that fact. And it's also bad when there's certain teams that are just way too good and no one else can compete. Adam Silver said it himself, if the Warriors swept the Cavs in the NBA Finals, the NBA would be in huge financial trouble. All right, that'll do it for PTI, pardon the interruptions. Um, for my friends Sam Crush and Freddie Stiefel, I'm Adam Shmeen, signing off for now.